Hey, what's going on everyone? Now, you may think that everything is just fine and dandy here at the camp uh, all the time. And you know, most of the time you'll watch people on YouTube and they gloss over some of the more disappointing facts about raising animals, but we don't do that here at this channel. Um, today, I'm gonna give you a whole list of my failures as I walk around the yard and basically uh, take stock of some of the many things I've done over the years and what I've learned from them. So today, we're gonna fail. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kenny. This week's special shout out goes to Kylie and Mark Hampson. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. All right, so the first thing that comes to mind that's a, an immediate failure, um, listen, there's no such thing as failure unless you quit. So I want you guys to take the stock of that. Like I've been learning ever since I'm six years old with my first turtle, um, it's, it's a work in progress. And anytime you work with animals, you're going to have deaths. It's important that we learn from these things. So uh, here we go. Um, check it out. Remember a few weeks ago where we did a video where I had baby tortoises in here and all was good. They had natural sunlight, outdoors. I love keeping my animals that way. Well, go on down here. You see that hole right there? It turns out the camp has a bit of a problem at the moment with rats. And um, the holes on the bottom here, if you come on over this side, guys, come on over in here and look down. You can see that these are large inch by inch wire. It keeps tortoises and lizards from digging out, at least the lizards that I did have in here. But the rats dug through, came in, and I found two of my redfoot tortoises eaten, just eaten out. And check it out over here, guys. It's kind of a bummer, man. So here are the babies. Thankfully, I was able to save the rest of them. But this little cherry head, if you look, check him out. His marginals were gnawed on. They were pretty much starting to eat this little guy. Um, so of course, I'm gonna keep him and make sure he gets healthy. Uh, he'll grow up and be a perfectly fine, uh, albeit just a little bit asymmetrical uh, cherry head tortoise. But I was able to save all the other redfoots here. Look at these guys. They are beautiful. So I'm keeping them now. Look at how light that one is. Isn't that gorgeous? I get a little sidetracked, I'm sorry. ADD, squirrel. Anyway, I um, I basically was able to rescue the rest of them, but to me, that's a failure, man. Um, I didn't know that the rats would be able to even get in here, but rats are so incredible about exploiting weaknesses. And uh, as you know, they dig and they gnaw. So we're gonna have to come up with a solution for this. Uh, one of the solutions is probably to put a smaller, uh, smaller gauged um wire in here and cover it back in uh that's the first thing i think i'll do um, but that's gonna have to save for another time another failure that i've had here at the old camp is i was robbed uh just over a year ago um inky here she is hi inky come here she'll come over here because she's become quite the uh quite the interactive lizard come on come on she just wants my fingers really but uh inky is gonna come over here and I'm gonna try not to get bit. But basically somebody broke into my property and then broke into this cage and stole my buddy, Inky, as well as Bobby Rubino, who is no longer with us because he's just not well. He was not well to begin with. So it took about 30 hours, but the good old department of uh, the police department here, the sheriff's department, the detectives at the Palm Beach Sheriff's uh, Office really were amazing. And they followed up on some leads that I gave them and we got Inky back. But it was a failure of mine because for too long, I just relied on the uh, goodness of others not to break into my house. But um, unfortunately, uh, that's not the case. You know, there are always going to be people that want to uh, harm what you've built and you've got to take into consideration that and you got to protect yourself. And now that I find myself something of a reptile, I don't know, person of notoriety, I suppose, um, I have to be more careful. So of course now we have cameras everywhere. I have locks on all the cages um, and you know, I've taken things a little bit more seriously. So through that failure, I've learned. So that's the cool thing about failing is you learn. And I have to say this particular failure could not have gone any better. The fact that I got this lizard back 
is huge. But come on, we got more to show you. Uh, way more to show you because it's a constant learning process here. Um, even some of the enclosures, we're gonna leave these guys soak for a little bit, then I gotta pull them out. Um, I don't think any rats are gonna come out during the daytime and I know the lizards don't want anything to do with those guys. So anyway, um, you know, again, just thinking of this, uh, Guapo and Lola, for the longest time, these guys didn't get along and it's such a weird thing, but now they seem to have chilled out, which is very, very cool. I'm happy about that because I happen to like keeping these two together. But what I learned through my failure of just having them together and not knowing what to do, um, you know, you have to pay attention to your animals and you have to think like a lizard or a reptile. And I was noticing that he would never go into the box. She would always keep him out of it. But check out what I did. Very simple. I'm always going on about visual barriers, right? So look what I've got in here. I put up, I put in one of these um, culverts, a half culvert, right? So one of them can go in there and out of sight, out of mind. And I also took one of Aquascape's aqua blocks and I threw this in here as well. And it kind of divides it. So one goes on one side, one goes on the other. So even though we failed and Guapo lost a toe in the process um, because she's kind of kind of aggressive. Uh, she's definitely the boss in here. Um, it's now chilled out because now they're getting along, as you can see. They're just kind of hanging out. He stays in his area. She stays in hers. They both use the box, but one goes in that culvert and one does not. So that's a pretty cool solution, I think, um, to having that happen. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. And again, it's just taking what you've learned in the past and then applying it to something different. If, if I didn't know that tortoise like those visual barriers, I may not have remembered for the lizards and I just used the same thinking. Watch your head when you get out of here. Oh, that's a failure too. That's why I always have to keep bending over. I built up the land in here and now people slam their heads into that. So I'm gonna have to get a big sign that says, attention, low clearance. Anyway. Or that just says Matt Duck. Matt Duck. Hey, come on over here. I got another failure. Uh, check this out. We're going to get in here and shut this. This is, this is a fail, in my opinion, that I have to remedy. Um, okay, so here is our Argus monitor. He's pretty cool. We love this lizard. He's amazing. But this lizard, look, he's tripoding. Look at that yeah. cool, cool lizard, right? I love that he stands up like that. But if you notice, guys, do you see all the foam on the ground? Oh, gosh, you see all that foam? All this stuff? Okay, it turns out that I used that foam to kind of stop him from digging back there. And guess what? Didn't stop him from digging back there. He just went through that foam. And now I've got all these little pieces of foam mixed in with my, with my uh, wood bark. Um, that's a fail on my part. I know now when you're dealing with monitor lizards, uh, the foam isn't going to stop him. Look at, it, look at this. Come over here. He's just still standing up, trying to be uh, extremely, um, you know, what is the word? Crazy looking? Come on. Look at this guy. Oh, come on. I have not received a bite from him yet. I want to see if I can just gently lift him up. He don't like that. Don't bite me now. Don't bite me now. I'm totally trusting this guy. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's the second <laughs> time he's come at me. There you go. Go that way. That's why I like shutting that door. Yeah, for sure. We don't want another fail, do we, friends? So we shut the airlock door, see? Use them. If you don't use them, you lose them. So, uh, yeah, interesting stuff. But um, again, I love these animals. They teach me so much. It's important to get in here and interact with them and uh, learn about some of the mistakes. So we know that I have to get in here with a big vacuum. I have to vacuum out all this stuff. So there's always work to do. Um, this isn't hurting him because he's not the type of animal that would gnaw on anything like this. Um, but I can't put any turtles in here uh, for the foreseeable future until I clean up all that mess. And I just think it's a fail because it doesn't look so good. But hey, I did pick him up a little bit. He didn't bite me. That's always nice. All right, let's move along. I'll show you. This next fail has to do with rats again. So since we got our sponsorship from our friends at Fluker, who are amazing, um, I've had to store more dry goods. And unfortunately, um, I used to use this type of container for keeping, um, you know, some of the dry goods safe because I have... Um, 
I, they, they come in big bags, some of the tortoise chows and so on. So I was like, oh man, if you look here, look at what the rats do. The rats have just gone crazy. And then even if I store in there, this was just from the other day, they just totally dug it out and, and ate it, right? So I decided, all right, well, that's a fail because I didn't want to lose food and just feed the rats. Um, I've got a rat trap. Uh, I catch the rats and then I euthanize them and feed them off after I've frozen them uh, for a while. But look what I did. I've used my brain. So um, we got these steel containers. That's kind of dark in here. I apologize. So you might want to hang back. But um, you got, I've got these steel uh, garbages and all my food is in there now. So I'm just storing everything in there, nice and dry, kept cool. And then just some of the other product are actually inside uh, some of the vision cages that are not being used, like my canned crickets, my W roaches, my, my shrimp, all that stuff. Because believe it or not, um, you know, they can actually, they'll gnaw off all the, uh, the plastic on this and they'll really try and get into it. So it's important. Um, okay, here's another failure. I, I love it, they're just coming to me. They're just coming to me. It's like I'm a savant of failing. Um, we had Buttercup in here for way too long in my opinion, for years. A 13 foot snake lived in this little vision cage. Now this, these are fantastic cages, but um, for the longest time, since they changed the laws, I was no longer allowed to keep Buttercup outside, okay? So I had to come up with something better for Buttercup because she's amazing, she's an awesome animal. And um, finally, uh, through my failure, I could not take my failure anymore. I had to do something about it because I like to make these animals' lives worth living. So for those of you who don't know, we built Buttercup this amazing habitat. Here it is right here. And um, we're going to go inside because I see that I have to pick a tick off her pretty little face. So this is what I do, guys. It's all about being interactive with these animals, keeping an eye on these animals, making sure that the animals are in fact um, cared for. So you can see she's got a tick right below her eye. So this is an interesting position. So what I want to do is I'm going to have to gently talk to her. Hi, little lady. They don't like being held. I'm not holding her tightly. I know, baby, I know. There we go. We got the tick off, just like that. Just like that. Um, basically, you want, um, you know, why do I have ticks in here? Well, um, it's pretty much out the outside. We're in a shed. Uh, it's not the uh, nicest, um, like, climate controlled area. But um, she is very happy in here. We have a huge environment for her. Um, it's very important. And I'm adhering to fish and wildlife, um, their rules and regulations. She can never, ever come outside again. I have to double bag her and put her in a locked container. So she is now inside a locked building inside a locked enclosure. And when the hurricane comes, I've got to do exactly what I said. I have to double bag, put her in two bags, put her in a locked container, and then leave her in the locked cage in case anything blew away, she'd still be contained. So again, the failure on my part was keeping her in a small environment for way too long, but she's got a better life now. And every once in a while, I got to pluck a tick off of her. But you know what? Here's another failure of mine right here. That's Zeus. Zeus was the largest sulcata that I have ever, ever had. And I loved Zeus. In 2008, I went to Australia. And um, I left my pop here at the camp to watch over everything. And I had two male sulcatas together that I knew were kind of battling each other, but I thought, ah, it's such a huge backyard. They'll get away from each other. It's no big deal. They fight, then they get away. Well, unfortunately for Zeus, he was the biggest tortoise in there, but Lumpy, uh, you may remember Lumpy. You guys know Lumpy. Um, he was only about 90 pounds. Zeus was over 150. And they started fighting apparently uh, while I was gone next to a fence, a solid structure. And Lumpy was able to get his ghoulr projections up underneath Zeus's neck and push and push and push until he finally tore the skin away from the upper part of the carapace and you could look in and see his body cavity. When I got home, maggots were filling him up. I tried to clean him, I tried to save him, but there was nothing that I could do. 
And so through my inaction and failure in realizing that these two tortoises, even though they had a big enough enclosure, could fight without me being there, um, it was it was just a, a big failure on my part. And I really loved Zeus. He was an amazing tortoise and is very sad. But now he is a... Uh, he is a testament to uh, always pay attention. And that's why uh, you'll see in some of the more recent videos from a few months ago when we introduced Lumpy back in with Hercules, I decided to pull them because they just weren't getting along. So yet another failure. Let's walk around and find some more. Okay, friends. So, you know, uh, one of the more recent failures that I've had is the cichlids in the giant wreck pond. That was such a bummer. Uh, we had hundreds of beautiful African cichlids in here and they were doing very well. I don't know exactly what happened. I think it was a combination of the snapping turtle living in here for a couple of months and uh, a little blue heron that came in and was just going to town on these guys. And then I did see um, some very, very cold temperatures in early December. And unfortunately I had some fish that went on over the waterfall because they got too sluggish and died. The good news is, is that in the recent weeks, Matt and I uh, have put some cichlids back in here and you can start to see that there is more color coming alive in the pond. I'm also going to go back and visit my friend Paul at Angel's Hatchery uh, and pick up a few more fish because, you know, I do enjoy having the cichlids in this pond. And the things I've learned is we've added uh, the balloons. Uh, those little ornaments are scaring away. You see there's another one over there. They're scaring away any herons. Uh, as I learned from my friend Paul, who's been doing fish for many, many years uh, in Florida, the birds don't like those big eyes looking at them, so they tend to stay away. So I keep a good eye out. I haven't seen any more birds coming around, which is fantastic. Um, the other thing is, is, you know, if I notice that there is a sick fish, I got to get it out of here quick because it's potential that it could have spread to the other uh, fish because we did lose quite a bit of fish. My thinking is that it was the incredible, incredible cold that we had. Um, that happens once every few years. You get like some 38 degree nights, um, but this one lasted for maybe a week. And that is a long time to have a pond go below 65 degrees. The water temperature was in the low 50s. And as you know, for any tropical fish, that is a death sentence. So what I think I need to do is get the um i have a well head that pumps water in i'm gonna put that deeper i want to put the warmer warmer water deeper so that what does heat do it rises so that it'll create a more stable temperature and also i've got to shut down the filtration on this just the fact that 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 um waterfall is going 24 7 during the winter, if we get those cold nights, I'm gonna shut down the pond, turn off the pumps, because stagnant water holds heat much better than flowing water, um, especially water that's flowing off on uh, off a waterfall. So that's what I've gotta to do to for that solution. So right now, we're hoping that all these fish over the next few months reproduce, they do well, and we can get some more color back inside this amazing habitat. Let's keep going. Yeah. Here's another failure of mine. I used to build these cement um, ponds for the animals and that's really good, but I kind of rushed it and uh, I didn't seal the cement. And right here where there is a drain, it's filled up with dirt, but this drain is cracked and it always leaks out. So there's a failure. Just learn to do things a bit better, man. Um, also, simple things like when I built this rock wall, I had to really figure out how to keep uh, the tortoises in. It turns out tortoises are a lot more uh, able or more athletic and agile than you think. And I knew this, but I thought redfoots don't climb. Wrong. They were able to get up over here. I placed this rock as a ledge. They're not able to get out anymore. I have to get all these log jams right here to keep them in. So it's a work in project. I don't know if it's necessarily a failure, guys, but basically I had to do certain things to this habitat to make sure that they couldn't get out. All right, all right. Gosh, this is incredible. There's so many, um, so many things have happened. Here's a failure, right here. 
Now, don't worry, it's not a horrible failure. I just need some more soil, but basically we put soil down, it all kind of settled into the chunks of concrete that we have under here, and so it looks like garbage. That's a failure. I don't want it to look horrible. I need a big dump. Uh, my friend, I need my friend Ruben to come with his skid steer. Put some dirt right there. But uh, again, should have known better because we have all these different size rocks and chunks of concrete, and as the soil settled, it kind of caved in a little bit. Now, most people, when they come see it, they go, are these gators gonna get out? They're not, because there's a fence that goes way down deep, and then it goes that way. And the gators have never tried to dig out, so that's good too. All right. That's for a future failure video. Oh, okay, yeah. That's a future failure video, yeah. Where's my giant 10 foot, 12 foot alligator? Oh my God, can you imagine? Now, I can't say this has been a failure. This has been just amazing. Um, because I know Jerry Wolf, and uh, this dude is pretty handy and a good friend, so pretty stoked on that. Well, here's a failure. I was out here before, and look what I didn't do. I didn't latch these secondary security systems, but good news is, is that I didn't build this. Jerry did, so the cage is pretty dialed in. But I'll talk about probably the biggest failure that I had. And um, come here, Slinky. Come here. Yeah, it has to do with Slinky. I know some of you know what I'm about to tell you. It was one of my most heartbreaking failures I've ever had. And before when I said about Inky coming back, I, I gotta just say guys, I've been, I don't know if blessed is the right word. I don't know if lucky is the right word. All I know is that I'm thankful because about two and a half, three years ago now, I, we had a 30 degree night. Come here, buddy. Don't bite me. Come over here. We had a 30 degree night and basically what was going on was um, I woke up at 5.30 in the morning like I always do, but something just didn't seem right. Usually I'll wake up at 2 a.m. and go check everyone on those kind of nights, but you know what, I was being lazy. I was totally lazy. I was nice and warm next to Kate, chilling out. And um, unfortunately, uh, Slinky got out of uh, his heated shelter. Now he used to live where Guapo and Lola was and actually had that same exact box that they lived in. There's a lid on top and I didn't secure the latches on the top and I figured, ah, oh, he'll be all right. Sorry, buddy. I have a fly on me that's biting me. Um, basically what happened was during the night, for whatever reason, he decided he wanted to sleep outside. So he pushed up out of that lid, went outside. And when I got up at 5.30 in the morning, just had to go check on him. He was outside in 30 degree weather. For I don't know how long. I went and grabbed him, I picked him up, his whole body was lifeless, fluid poured out of his mouth. Um, I honestly thought Slinky was dead forever. And um, turns out um, I brought him inside, I said a lot of bad words, my children heard those words, and thankfully good old Leo was looking at Slinky, and it's been about 20 minutes since he was inside the house, and he noticed that Slinky's eye was closing. And then a little bit later, Slinky swallowed. So I warmed Slinky up over the course of four hours and we have a time lapse of that. And he came back to life and my greatest failure became my greatest triumph because Slinky lived. And I vowed if he pulled through and lived, I would go ahead and make him the ultimate enclosure. And with the help of my friend, Jerry Wolf, who loves monitor lizards and my friends at Universal Rocks. And of course my friends at Aquascape, they built this incredible habitat. And you can rest assured that anytime it is, it is at all cold, I make sure the animals are all buttoned up. There's no way they can get out and they are well cared for. So your failures are lessons, my friends. Don't think of failure as, um, you know, as something bad. Think of failure as a teacher and always learn and listen. And I promise you, there'll be more failures here but I'll listen and learn from them. And when you're working with animals, anything can happen. So you always have to be prepared. But the reward is that we get to spend our lives sharing our lives with these amazing animals. And I get to share my life with you on these uh, videos. And I get to share the wisdom I have attained. And uh, it's, it's fun. It's fun to have gained wisdom and it's also fun to be a novice. So always be both if you can. Um, a wise man always knows that he doesn't know anything at all. So always keep the glass 
half full. Okay? What did Bruce Lee say? Do not focus on the finger or you will miss all the heavenly glory. In other words, if you're glad, I don't even know why I brought that up, but I like Bruce Lee. Uh, Enter the Dragon, watch it, great movie. He's talking to a young Shaolin monk. All right, my friends, that's it. That's all the farriers I'm willing to give up for the day. But um, I'm gonna hang out here with Slinky a little bit more because I love these interactions. Go hang out with your animals. Let me know some of the things you've learned either from this video or through your own failures in the comments below. I would love to read them and see what you guys are all about. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys soon on another video and don't be afraid to fail.